by Julia Hegemar. I will let her introduce it on the green microphone.
my last service here among you guys, and uh, we're going to have a lot of children singing today, so it's going to be awesome and a blessing. Let's take a moment in time today, stand up right where you're at, and greet those all around you today.
Let's make our beginning today. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious God, we recognize in our lives that you are good, and many times we are not. Forgive us, O Lord, of those times when we have sinned against you. In our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. Make us holy, O Lord, only by your holy, precious blood. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our gracious God has had mercy upon us and brought forth his Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, in order to wash our sins away. Through his shed blood upon the cross of Calvary, we have the forgiveness of sins. As a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I declare to you that forgiveness today in your life. That you're forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. your hand of majesty to heal and defend us through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever
The first reading is from Job chapter 28, 1 through 28. Surely there is a mine for silver and a place for gold that they refine. Iron is taken out of the earth and copper is smelted from the ore. Man puts to an end to darkness and searches out to the farthest limit. The ore in gloom and deep darkness. He shafts in a valley away from where anyone lies. They are forgotten by travelers. They hang in the air far away from mankind. They swing to and fro. As for the earth, out of it comes bread, but underneath it is turned up as by fire. The stones are placed of sapphires, and it has dusts of gold. The path no bird of prey knows, and the falcon's eye has not seen it. The proud beast has not trodden it. The lion has not passed over it. Man puts hand to the flinty rock and overturns mountains by the roots. He cuts out channels into the rock, and his eye sees every precious thing. He dams up the streams so that they do not trickle, and that the thing that is hidden he brings out to light. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man does not know its worth, and it is not found in the land of the living. The deep says, it is not in me, and the sea says, it is not with me. It cannot be bought for gold, and silver cannot be weighed as its price. It cannot be valued in the gold of Ophir, in precious onyx or sapphire. Golden glass cannot equal it, nor can it be exchanged for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or crystal. The price of wisdom is above pearls. The topaz of Ethiopia cannot equal it, nor can it be valued in pure gold. From where then does wisdom come, and where is the place of understanding? It is hidden from the eyes of all living, and concealed from the birds of the air. Abaddon and death say, we have heard a rumor of it within our ears. God understands the way to it, and he knows its place. For he looks to the end of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. When he gave it to the wind, its wake, and appointed the waters by measure. When he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning of the thunder, then he saw it and declared it. He established it and searched it out. And he said to man, Behold, the fear of the Lord that is wisdom, and to turn away from the evil is understanding. This is the word of the Lord. The next reading is Proverbs 2, um, 1 through 8. My son, if you will receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding. Yes, if, if you call out for insight and, and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search it for, for it as hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For, for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound, sound wisdom from, for the upright. He, has, he is a shield for those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice and um, and watching over the way of his saints. This is the way of, this is the way of the Lord. Thanks. Our final lesson today is taken from the first chapter of First Corinthians. This is also the basis of our meditation today. We begin with the tenth verse. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each one of you says, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Is Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, 
so that not, no one may say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanas. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Our seventh and eighth grade choir will now bless you with a song called Let Us Walk This Road Together. And just very fitting for today as um, you know, God has is calling the cutlers to a new place of service and just reminds us that no matter where we go or where God leads us in this life, where his path leads us, that we in Christian love and Christian unity, we walk this road together.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Heavenly Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text comes from the epistle lesson read earlier, the lesson that I read in the service, taken from the first chapter of 1 Corinthians, verse 10, where it says, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree. There be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. And then verse 18. It says these words, The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing. To those of us who are being saved, it is the wisdom of God. This is our text of scripture today as well. Well, this is my last sermon that I have among all of you today. This is a time of final words to be spoken. Some of us just said that sometimes the most important words that a person can say to someone else are the first words of their life and the last words of their lives. So certainly we know the first words are very important, those cries that are spoken when you're just being born. But also I've heard many people say the last words of their lives and how significant those words truly are. So I pray that I have some significant words for you today in these final words that I give to you. I have a lot of words that I want to share with you, but I am constrained. I am restricted. Not by the amount of time. I could go on for hours and hours and hours. And you could say, no way, Pastor. Don't do that. Not for hours. But I am restricted to the Word of God. That's our very lives. Our preaching, our lives are given in the context of God's Word. So God's Word today gives us two simple words that we are going to take home with us today. The first word is unity, and the second word is the cross. Cross and unity. Let's focus in upon those words today. First of all, unity. Our text talks about that in verse in verse 10, I, am, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And everything is done by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I appeal to you. To do what? That all of you be in agreement. That you agree with all. That there be no disunity, no division among you. And also that you be united in one mind and one judgment. Now these words in Corinthians is given to the congregation in Corinth. And they were having some problems. And we know some of the problems from our epistle lesson. They had problems like people following other people. Like one group would say, I follow Paulus, I follow Paul, I follow Cephas, I follow whoever it might be. They have a bunch of groups following a bunch of different people. And that was their issue. And that was their problem. But God's word is timeless because that's the very issue that we many times have in the church of today. And even here at Trinity Lutheran Church. Well, I've heard it many times over. Oh, I follow the school. And this is why. Or I follow Miss Ferris and the child care. Or I follow the camp and Pastor Kevin. And Melanie, I follow the church, I follow this person, I follow that leader. We all have the tendency to be divided because we're following different people. And this was the problem in Corinth, and that can be the problem for us here at Trinity as well. But the problem went deeper than that even, is that the people of Corinth were following after their own selfish desires. In fact, they were going after their own selves, their own things. It was such a problem that when they celebrated the Lord's Supper in chapter 11, that some of the people were eating all of the Lord's Supper before anybody else got to the table at all. They weren't paying attention to one another. Those issues of following after others and those issues of making ourselves first are problems that exist in the church today as well. So, how do we do it? How, how do we come together in agreement? How do we have no divisions among us? 
How can we be united in one mind and one spirit? Because you see, all of us are sinners. All of us have the problem of sin in our lives, don't we? And that issue of sin affects every single relationship that we have. Every single relationship that we have is infected by sin. So how do we do it? I believe Paul has some really good words in Philippians chapter 2. And I'm going to abbreviate that passage, those 10 verses there. I'm going to start at verse 5. Have this mind as in the same mind of Christ. That being in the very nature of God, he did not consider equality with God to be grasped, but instead he emptied himself and became nothing. And taking on the form of a human being, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. There is our answer when we follow Christ. When we follow the value statement of our congregation, which is TLC, not Trinity Lutheran Church, but Think Like Christ. When we think like Christ, we follow after Christ, and we follow after His footsteps, we humble ourselves even to the point of the cross. And there we get it. The cross is right in front of our eyes once again. And that's our second point today, the cross. Now, you children have been listening to chapels for many years, haven't you? Some of you, more years than not, uh, and so forth. Many of you, eighth graders, have listened to a long time. Some of you are not quite so long, like Merrick, or some of you other kids. But every single time Pastor Keller comes and does a chapel with you guys, he's always going to talk sometime in the chapel about the cross. About the cross. Most of you church members here that have heard me preach, you always hear me preaching about the cross. The word of the cross. What is the word of the cross? I think it brings out several very important aspects for our lives. First of all, the word of the cross, which you children hear all the time, is that the word of the cross, and the word of the cross, we have our sins forgiven. The blood of Jesus Christ that he shed upon the cross of Calvary washes away all of our sins. That's the blood of Jesus, and that's freeing for us. It's good to know that our sins are washed away by Jesus' blood. That by his death upon the cross, our sins are forgiven. But the cross, the word of the cross, also gives us another message. It also gives us the message that other people's sins are washed away as well. In other words, Jesus died on the cross for me, but he also died on the cross for a lot of other people out there. Those people that sin against us, Jesus died for those people as well and for those sins. That's good news. It's good news in our relationships that we have with one another as well. It's good news to know that when someone has sinned, that they are underneath the banner of the cross as well. And they are forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ as well. And we can love them just as God loves those other people as well. Because we know that he went to the cross and died for them there. That's the beautiful message of the cross. But it's also sharing forth the message of God's love. Because what comes out of the cross are beams of love. Love that shows us exactly what life is really all about. It's about God's love that comes through the cross. And therefore, we can exercise the power of the cross with one another in our relationships with one another. That's what the cross does. That's the loving image of the cross. All ground is level at the base of the cross. That's the beauty of the cross itself. Now, I know. I know the world says, oh, the cross, it's a bunch of folly. It's foolishness. It's this foolishness to, to believe in the cross, to know the word of the cross. It's foolishness. But it's exactly the power that we need in our lives. We need to hear the message of the cross over and over and over again because we are a people who tend to forget exactly who we are when it comes to Jesus and what he accomplished for us on that cross. We're all children of God. We need to hear the message of the cross and also 
the saints in Mayville, Wisconsin, need to hear the message of the cross as well. The word of the cross and how God loves them very, very much. And they will hear it. They will hear it from this messenger. This messenger who's been giving the message for over 14 and a half years to you guys. They will hear it over and over and over again. How God loves us, especially in Jesus our Savior. So what's important? What's truly important? What's truly important is indeed knowing that it's not about the messenger. It's about the message. And the message is the word of the cross. It's not about the person. It's not about me. It's not about the person at all. It's about the power. The power lies. The power lies in the word of the cross. The word of the cross brings us together. Let's pray. Oh, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this word. This word for Trinity Lutheran. In all of its ministries, in the school, the child care, the camp, I thank you for this word. And this word, this word that comes from my lips today, Lord, this word that is for all of us, that draws us together, that draws us together around the cross and what it means for us. We thank you, Lord, for your servants. We thank you for the ministers that serve your message of the cross in our classrooms, in our camp, in our child care facility. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of the cross and the messengers of that cross. Continue to bless that message here for us together. Bring us together, O oh Lord, so that many more, many more, I know of your grace and your love that's found in Jesus, our Savior and Lord. In his name we pray. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all of our human understanding. May guard and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us give bold profession of our common faith in our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as we speak now the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us rise as we give confession of our faith today. We confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We receive at this time our gifts, our tithes, our offerings, as well as our talents.
You may be seated. Our students are going to get into their places quietly. Fifth and sixth grade back over here, seventh and eighth back over there. Everyone can get into place quietly as we practice that. Students, as quietly as we practice that. As they're getting into place, our benediction song today is entitled, Go in Peace. And we invite Mrs. Cutler to come up and sit with Pastor Cutler. Where is Mrs. Cutler? a blessing to the students and staff here at Trinity Lutheran School. And we just want to thank you. And of course, the benediction song is for everyone to go in peace today. Um, however, we especially want to dedicate this song to Pastor and Mrs. Cutler. And I know our students are going to do a wonderful job.
I'm going to have you guys go back to your seats because I have a long set of announcements today. But I do want to thank um, all of you, little ones especially, because it's a long service to, to get up and down and walk around and listen to Pastor preach for a long time. So thank you very much, children, for the lessons. But I'm going to let you go back to your seats and see so you can sit for a little bit longer because I have a couple things that I need to say. Uh, for the life of the congregation. So why did things stop for it's so good? Kindergartners and first graders and unbelievable. Let's give our entire student body a round of applause for it. Rebecca, what a beautiful uh, job you've done for the many years you've been here. Dr. Naylor, I don't even know your first name. I just call you Dr. Naylor. That's, uh, that's all I know. Yeah, great. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, I just call it Dr. Naylor. That's all I call it. So you've been a blessing to our school. And also, Beth, you know, a blessing to us in the first service, I think, all of the organists. And you've been just a grateful, loving servant. Thank you, Beth, for that blessing uh, for that part. So thank you very, very much to all the music people who did an job. Um, I want to thank Mrs. Burns, uh, first of all, for giving me the opportunity to preach on a Sunday because her class did an excellent job of doing a drama on, uh, the, on the, uh, in the uh, Wednesday chapel. And I said, yeah, I'd like to preach on Sunday morning to you guys and to give a message. So thank you, Mrs. Burns, for doing that. I want to introduce a couple of people because I want to bless these people that are closest to me in my life, in the life of the parish, the parish Trinity. Uh, so I'm going to ask people to come forward at certain points in time, and I know you're going to be embarrassed, many of you guys are going to be embarrassed, but I first of all want to have my wife stand next to me during this time. Thirty-five years. You've got to put up with me. Uh, uh, congregation to congregation. Uh, some of you children hardly ever see us together, but we are our husband and wife. And uh, Mrs. Cutler and Mr. Cutler, Pastor Cutler are together, and she has blessed my life, and she's been through it all. Uh, believe me, she's been through it all. So um, I, I don't say thanks enough, and I don't, we don't rec I don't recognize Joanne nearly enough in the ministry as well. Uh, but thanks for walking with us, and thanks for going with you to Mayfield, Wisconsin. That's <laughs> not a this I'm blessed, that's for sure. There are several circles of people that I want to talk about and talk to right now. And if if Mrs. White could come forward, if Mrs. Ferris could come forward, and also if uh, Pastor Kevin could come forward, that would be great just to say, no, I want you to stay right here. <laughs> stay right here. That part. All righty. These are the individuals who are leaders in our ministries in the life of our church, and we don't see them enough, and we don't we don't have them enough uh, in that, that regard. Uh, but Pastor Kevin is the executive director of our camp, uh, and anyone that's involved in our camp, as far as staff goes, stand up right now. I know there's. There's a couple of people. Matthias was here earlier, but oh, there he is right there. He's starting to stand up. There's a couple of other people. Yep, all right, excellent. Very good. So thanks for serving in our camp area. <laughs> there are exciting things that are going to happen in our camp because it's blessed with great leadership, and Pastor Kevin's going to lead the camp and the great things. Melanie is going to continue to lead as well. So we thank, thank God that we call here in Trinity, Pastor Kevin, and especially his camp leadership as well. Mrs. White, I was part of the call committee for her, and she is going to be a great blessing. I, it's just uh, uh, almost a horrible thing to say, but I just have not had enough time with her because uh, I think we're on this. I, I believe we're on the same page. She agrees with me all the time. That's the thing. That's always the good thing. The principal agrees with the pastor all the time. 
That's a good thing, Doug. She's a great blessing to the life of this congregation, a seasoned veteran in this in our school, and we are blessed to have her as the principal of our school, and also the boss of my wife. That's a good thing too. That's a really good thing. So she's she was a uh, boss of the wife. Could all of our teachers stand up in our school? Just the teachers right now. Just the teachers. All of our teachers. <laughs> Ms. Rankin is in the first grade classroom, and she's been a blessing as well. She is a, an excellent, excellent teacher in the classroom. We have nothing but excellent teachers in the classroom. So once I say your name, you can sit down. Once I say your name, you can sit down. Our second grade teacher is Ms. Mrs. Rabine. I was, I always, I'm tempted to say Mrs. Mrs. but I can't say it. But thank you very much. Eric has been here on our staff blessing this this is great line has been. And then our third grade teacher was my wife, but now it's Heidi Schwartz. She is a blessing to our school. <laughs> Mr. Rabine is teaching our fourth grade classroom, has been a blessing to our church, our school, and will be a blessing in the years ahead in service and ministry to the Lord. So thank you very much for serving in that area. Also then, we sit down, and then Mrs. Evelyn is in our fifth grade classroom. No, excuse me, Osoy is in our fifth grade classroom. I made that mistake. I'm sorry. She serves as our athletic director as well of that half. So thank you very much, Ms. Foy, for blessing our school uh, with you. And then Ms. Edlin is in our sixth grade classroom. Thank you very much for serving us in the school as well. And then Mrs. Burns. school that are that make the school run. And I think Mrs. White would say that that they make the school run. And one is Heidi. Can you stand up Heidi wherever you're at? Kendra. Is Kendra here today? Is she here today? I don't see her here today. I didn't see her. They both make our school run as secretaries. Support staff is important. I'm not going to mention all the aides that are here and so forth that are, that are part of the classroom as well. There's lots of aides that, that do a fabulous job on the playground and so forth as well. Mrs. Ferris is the head of our child care. And she has been, oh, Mrs. McGregor, where's she at? There she is, please go. Great, back there. is an excellent preschool teacher. Excellent in preschool service and ministry. I've seen so many Christmas programs. They're, they're awesome. If you haven't had an opportunity, you've got to come to one of those of these awesome, awesome programs that just give a message. And also then, finally, but not last, um, Ms. Ferris. Thank you very much for your service. She's served with me the longest here. I think it was like two or three years since I was here, and then we became child care director for Lori. I think was that was that about right? Yeah, you served together for a little while too. So yeah, you didn't have to suffer the meetings, so, so yeah. you, didn't get, you didn't get a chance to suffer the meetings like the rest of the ministry. So you have workers here. I know Shelly's over here as well, but any other workers for the child care, please stand up. Please stand up. Yeah, Christina, very good. Christina, I'll see anybody else. No, I don't see I don't see anybody else. All right, so thank you very much for your service. God bless the ministries of our church through you. Our four huge branches of our church. And God continue to bless you. 
they've been excellent. They're, they're high level professionals, is what they are. So thank you for your service and the communication. Your service. You can go sit down now. So one of the servants here, Pastor Kevin, also serves as associate pastor here. He serves in a variety of different hats, and he will get his third hat coming up after the services as well. He will be serving as camp director, associate pastor, and he'll be serving as an interim pastor as well during this time as well. So he's serving in a lot of different ways, so his hat's going to change quite a bit. So his blessing is, and then... Um, and then Shannon Ritter. Can you can you come forward for a moment, Shannon? Where are you at? Shannon's right there in her flannel. <laughs> Excellent. Come on forward, Shannon. This is a ministry in the life of the church that is an incredibly growing ministry in the life of the church. It needs to grow. It needs to grow. Very good. It needs to grow. It's family life ministry. She's our family life servant to the Lord sees it going on in so many different ways and Shannon is, is an excellent person, well qualified, master's degree in that in that area of, of ministry and service and she is igniting things to go, instrumental person along with Colleen behind Stephen Ministry in the Life of the Church, a caring ministry in the Life of the Church, also covers moms as well, but then also just tries to make family ministry a focus of the life of our congregation. That's a very important part of life as well. Uh, so, Shannon, thank you very much for your service. Blessings to you. Thank you. The three people that I'm going to talk about now are people that are closest to me in the office and they will be making this. Sandy, come forward. Amy, come forward. And Brooke, come forward. My wife just whispered to me and said, they're not going to like this, Pastor. <laughs> they are going to like this. These people make the church run. They are I just want to say some things about them. Because they know me probably not as well as my wife does. I will say that. My wife knows me better. But they know me through and through. Uh, Brooke has my calendar 24-7. She knows where I'm at. She knows what I'm doing. She knows what's going on. She has everything under control for that part. Uh, Brooke has served the Lord, and she has understood the in integral marks of being a pastor. And her doxology training was excellent for that part of it as well. And she, I think, got a little bit more of a glimpse of what that pastor thing is uh, for that part. She has been a joyful servant of the Lord and has blessed us for six years, almost six years now. So she has been a blessing. She's been a faithful member of our church for longer than that. But it's blessed our staff uh, definitely uh, for that part. Amy is an administrative coordinator. She takes care of everything that I don't want to take care of. <laughs> she takes care of all the physical, material aspects in the life of the church. She literally does. She takes off of my plate anything that has to do with that kind of thing. And she just takes it. Joyfully, she is a Fortune 500 administrator, literally. I will just say that. She, she could be serving for hundreds of thousands of dollars someone else. And she chooses to serve in the life of the church with her gifts and abilities. But not just that. She serves in the capacity from her heart. And I know that so very, very well. I've had discussions with her that that will remain discussions between her and me that have been concerning life as a whole. And I thank God for Amy Glenn, for the entire Glenn family, but especially for Amy. She has been a servant of the Lord and has blessed 
this congregation and has truly blessed me, has truly blessed me. The final person I want to talk about is Sandy. Sandy is, I think that's your name. Is that right? <laughs> it's, it's like, well, I don't know. I followed out a couple years after I knew Sandy. I said, you got a different name? What's going on? What's going on? Uh, Sandy has blessed me. She has, she has been able to call spade a spade. She doesn't mix anything up as far as that goes. She, she truly calls out what needs to be called out. She's an absolute honest integrity, a person of absolute integrity for that part. She has suffered with me for 14 and a half years. From the moment I got on staff, she is here. So, I'm quizzing you now. These are my last words to you guys. What were my first words to you? She can't remember. She can't remember. The first words that I had on staff to, to Sandy, she has been a blessing. Uh, it, absolute blessing. She's stuck with me through thick and thin, through all of the, all everything. She has been a blessing uh, in the staff. So I bless you guys. You guys have been just incredible for me in the life of the ministry. I never thought that leaving my staff in Seward, I'd find a better staff, but I will say it even on tape. You guys have blessed me in an even greater way. Blessings to you, you guys on staff. Thank you very much.